have to show you guys this beautiful sunrise today. Wow, look at that. It's so gorgeous. With the fog. It's beautiful. Today I'm having my one meal a day again. It looks very much like the other one I put up. Hi guys. <laughs> it looks like I'm constantly eating, but I'm still eating one meal a day. It's just that with the lockdown, what else can you do? There isn't much variety I can show you, so you're gonna watch me eat a lot, I guess. Um, which I don't know. Dinner time is a good time to socialize, so there we go. We can socialize at dinner time. I wanted to talk about um, last time. Remember I said I wanted to talk about number one and number two? Well, I have to switch. So today, instead of using the number one and number two, I am going to use a salt shaker and a pepper shaker. In fact, I actually need some salt, so here we go. I bought these two for a video that I wanted to make called Salt Shaker, and I don't use pepper very much, but just for today. But for technical reasons it didn't work out so I'm using it here today so imagine that you can think of number one as being the salt and number two as being the um, I mean number two as being the, the salt the pepper I don't know if you can see but uh, the pepper has like little white spots black and white and of course the salt is pure white and so this could be a really good metaphor for how God is, God is light in whom there is no darkness at all, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's a mixture of light and darkness, good and evil. So, you know, since Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, our world has been mixed with good and evil, like the pepper shaker. But God's kingdom is this one. And I think most of us have confused things by thinking that God is the little white particles in this kingdom, but God's kingdom is completely outside of it, out by itself. The tree of life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So that's where a lot of the confusion has come from. First John 1 5, God is light in whom there is no darkness at all. So until we understand that, we're always going to think that God is in here somewhere with those little white particles but the fact is God is here and that's why Jesus came he came to show us that God is here um, so problem is like I said ever since Adam and Eve ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil the whole human race has been confused about God thinking that he's here and that happened all the way until Jesus came. Because when Jesus comes, he himself, I think, maybe it wasn't him. It's in the book of Luke and in the book of John of Matthew where it says that the world that was lying, sitting in darkness, have seen a great light. And that's Jesus. He is the light of the world because he shows to us a God of the tree of life. Now this has a lot of repercussions because that means that the Old Testament could not have this knowledge yet because Jesus hadn't come. So for 4,000 years, they saw God through this. But God inspired them to write the Bible anyway. But when it comes to the character of God, only Jesus can give us the truth. And Moses himself, who was doing this, he said that another prophet was going to come, like him, to take people out of Egypt into Canaan, to take out of darkness into light, 
and him, that other prophet is Jesus, and we gotta listen to him. Does that nullify the Old Testament? No. But in order to understand the Old Testament and why they wrote about a God of good and evil, we have to look at Jesus to understand why they thought that way and, and to understand the Old Testament through this, through the tree of life and not the tree of death. And that's really the difference between these two. Life, death, life, death. God of life, lowercase God of death creator god of jesus satan the god of this age the ruler of this age the god of this age okay i forgot to put olive oil on my food i'm still loving my one meal a day it suits my metabolism my metabolism so much better it works for me very well and I have low blood pressure, so I can eat salt. If you have high blood pressure, that doesn't work so well. Mm, really good. So, once you understand the difference between the salt shaker and the pepper shaker, the Bible is going to become a new book for you. Then you'll be able to divide it, divide the word rightly, right? See what God is responsible for, see how he acts, how he um, operates, as opposed to the God of this age. Now there's a very interesting passage in the book of Job that says that there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before God, and Satan came also with them. My understanding of that, the word present, if you look in the Hebrew, <clears throat> it means almost to take a stand for. They came to take a stand for God, like they were protecting him or defending him. And Satan came along, not to do that, but the word Satan means accuser, so he came to do the opposite. He came to accuse God. I'm actually going to find that right here. I have my, my e-sword and my iPad. I'm going to find it so that I don't misquote anything. That's Job chapter 1, around verse 5 or 6, verse 6. And I'm going to look at the King James and the Esword because that gives me the Hebrew meaning of each word. So, <clears throat> now there was a day when the sons of God came to present. Okay, I'm going to look at that word present. And the Strong's Dictionary says, Um, the word is yatsav, by the way. It says to place anything so as to stay, uh, reflexive, reflexively to station, offer, continue, present themselves, remain, resort, uh, be able to to stand, to take a stand, to withstand, a stand, to confront, to take one stand. That's what the word study says. Okay? Now, Satan, the word Satan, means adversary one who withstands an opponent the arch enemy of god of good so instead of standing for god he withstands against god he came also among them now these sons of god the word son comes from the word to build like and it's very it's connected to the word rock in hebrew bana so it's like think of building a house and every rock builds the house so the word son is a builder of god's house Okay, a builder of the family name. So, I think that because Satan was also there, then these sons of God had something in common with Satan. And the one thing that Satan might have had in common with them had to do with his relationship to the earth. And the clue is in verse 7, because it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Where do you come from? 
And of course, God knew where Satan was coming from. But he said, where do you come from? Then Satan answered and the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Now, immediately you think of that as, you know, east, west, north, south, um, which gives the idea that he's like controlling the earth, ruling the earth. But what's even more interesting is if you look into these words, going to and fro and walking up and down in it. Not in the Strong's dictionary, but in the ancient Hebrew dictionary. Oh, it's so juicy. Okay, so in the ancient Hebrew, going to and fro, look what it means. To scourge or whip, a whipping or lashing out at someone or something out of hatred or punishment. God asks Satan, where do you come from? And Satan goes, I come from ruling the earth through punishment. Okay, but that's not all. The next word, going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Now that word up and down in it, again in the ancient Hebrew, is written by a picture of a shepherd's staff, a shepherd, Jesus is the good shepherd, a shepherd has really good connotations. Okay? So he goes around the earth ruling it with, guess what guys? His tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The good and the evil. The good is a reward system, the evil is a punishment system. Reward and punishment, there you go. Guess what? Only white. That means no duality, no reward and punishment. There it is, right there in the Bible. The Lord said unto Satan, where do you come from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down in it. In other words, from using punishment and reward as a system to keep order. Do you guys use reward and punishment in your house? Does it keep the order? <clears throat> it might, but it also creates a lot of pain. And that's what Satan has done to the human race. So I might keep this video really short just to let, just to let this sink in. And then of course, God gets blamed for this duality, for this reward and punishment. When really, all he has is unconditional love, because that's what Jesus taught. Love your neighbor, love your enemy, love everybody. Which really is the only way to coexist, otherwise we kill each other. Which is what we're doing. <laughs> it's so obnoxious to eat in front of people. And to make eating noises, I apologize. explains the whole history of the earth and you know what the deeper you go into the Bible the more these things start to jump out at you keep always in mind the duality and the singleness singleness of God duality of Satan of good and evil you don't have to go too far you can see karma yin and yang everything Everything this world has, and it says it's good, but it's not. It's death, because this tree is the tree of death, even though God didn't call it the tree of death, because God wanted to give us a clue what's involved in that death. It's good and evil, a mixture of good and evil. And so, Egypt was bathed in good and evil because all the gods, who are the fallen angels, according to the Bible, were teaching the Egyptians their moral law of good and evil. They directly taught, they taught them directly through their magic, all sorts of stuff they were doing. So, so God tells Moses, because Pharaoh, who was a type of Satan, was oppressing the people, making them work with hard labor, which by the way, is what this tree is all about. It's the works system. You do evil, I mean, you do good, God is gonna reward you. You do evil, God is gonna punish you. Therefore, keep the law. Because if you don't keep the law, God is going to punish you. Well, it's an oppressive system and it doesn't work. 
<clears throat> so God said to Moses, take my people out of Egypt. Take them out of here. Take them out of here. Bring them in here. So that they may keep my Sabbaths, which is God's rest. The rest of having total peace with a God who does not reward you and punish you. Who just loves you. And that love transforms you, by the way. You do not want to keep breaking the law after you get this. So, and guess what Pharaoh, guess what one of Pharaoh's biggest symbol is. I'll put it up and you can see it. What you see there is the, it's the crook and the flail. The crook is the shepherd's rod. The flail is an instrument of punishment. What a coincidence, wow. So, in the Bible also, Elijah says, how long are you gonna waver between two opinions? If God is God, worship him. If Baal, ooh, Baal. If Baal is God, worship him. I challenge you to go to the internet and find out about Baal. Find out if he is a God of reward and punishment. Baal, the people were so afraid of him because he was so punishing and so nasty and so cruel. They began offering him sacrifices to appease him, which included offering their own children. Hmm. Imagine a God who is so mean that you have to sacrifice your children to him. I'm just going to put a seed of thought here. Baal is, is an ancient Phoenician god, but Baal is still well alive and living and still ruling in our world. So my challenge is, can you recognize Baal in the modern day world? Oh, and there's one more thing. Baal was the god of the weather.